We're here at a certified collision center in Costa Mesa, California, uh, because the owner called and said he was having a problem with his Millermatic 140 uh, auto set welder. So what I'm going to do is show you how to uh, diagnose the problem and then take it apart, do a maintenance, and get it all set up for making a particular weld. Foremost thing that we need to do is look at the safety for our technicians. The first thing we're going to do is going to put on a, a welding jacket. Uh, this particular respirator is it fits distinctly under a welding mask. Next is we're going to use a quality helmet. And the next is we're going to use as a proper MIG glove. Now our technician is fully protected and he's ready to go to work. Before we get started, I'd like to talk about welding mask. Uh, being welding instructor for the last 15 years across the country, I come across a lot of welding masks that are purchased because of their cheap price. Uh, we only have two eyes, we can't go out and get new ones, so we want to get a good quality welding mask. So let's go over some of the features of what a good quality welding mask has. First, we want, we're going to change the screen. It slips into the mask like so. Done. Again, you want to make sure that you can if you purchase a mask that you can get the screens readily available. A lot of times that the screens aren't available uh, after you purchase and it's like uh, watch trying to see through a windshield that is dirty. Uh, you can't do it. The sun will reflect off of it so we always want to keep our screens. Next we want to look in the back side and we want to make sure that if it has a the ability to put in a Doppler. Most technicians have to do close in work and if you don't have this feature it really uh, hinders the technician. Uh, if you don't have that feature here is a pair of safety glasses from Kent Automotive. These are a two Doppler uh, uh, so they could wear these instead of using the magnifier inside the helmet. But this welder has a problem with bird nesting. As you can see the wire keeps jamming on them. So we're gonna diagnose the problem and then we will uh, do a little maintenance at the same time. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this wire. The first thing we see, I see here is we have a problem with this nozzle. So we're gonna change the nozzle. As you can see, this thing is totally worn out. These need to be checked on a regular basis to make sure that they are giving you the proper amount of shielding gas going around your weld. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the wire and I'm also going to replace and take the contact tip off. I'm going to sit there and helix the wire out and first thing I noticed that the wire is skipping. Now I can feel it in the trigger, it's going on and off and one of the problems with that is would cause a bird nest. Could be a contact tip, well we replace the contact tip. The, uh, we'll check the tension but the biggest problem I feel is that it is in the gun liner. So let me show you how to replace a gun liner. We're going, to, we're going to turn off the machine. We're going to loosen this up here. We're going to take the wire, loosen this up here, and we're going to take the gun out. These are MIG weld pliers. Uh, they're designed for MIG welders. This here cleans your nozzle. This here tightens and loosens up all your parts. This cuts your wire and this pulls your nozzle off. The first thing we're gonna do is loosen this up. Take the, move the diffuser. Right here, there's a kink. So we're gonna get a new liner. 
Then we want to stretch out our gun. We're just going to feed this in. Next, we're going to cut it, cut the wire. Uh, you want to inspect the diffuser, make sure it is, the holes are clear. Uh, this is where your argon CO2 gas comes out of. Before I put the gun back in, I'm going to take a scotch right here and just clean it up, make sure that it's a nice clean surface. Part of the maintenance, gentlemen, is when you are uh, the rollers. Very few people take a look at the rollers. So all we're going to do on this one is take it in. As you can see, there's all kinds of buildup on it. Again, you want to make sure that the wire size here, as you can see, is 024. So we're going to make sure that that is out. We're going to clean off the top roller here. Now, part of your maintenance, gentlemen, is that you want to do is, uh, every, you know, once a month or so, with no wire in there, blow, blow the air out of there. And that way there, uh, if there's any buildup of materials, it'll come out. Okay, we're going to put the gun back in. Yeah, you, what you want to do is make sure gun liner is lined up on the groove of the of the bottom roller before you start to put your uh, wire back in. Okay, so we're going to put the new contact tip on. The gun is ready to go. So let's talk a little bit to see if the gun, if we have to make any adjustments on here. It feels like it's a little bit on the tight side, so I'm just going to make a slight adjustment. The proper way to adjust this is come on over here, turn it all the way up, and you turn it down until you start feeding the wire out. It'll start slipping, and as soon as you feel it grabbing, turn it another half turn. I just turned it down, and that feels real good. We're going to take the cap off. First thing we want to do is uh, blow out any dust that's in there. And we're going to adjust our flow here, which is a little on the high side. We'll adjust it about between 15 and 20 CFH. You want to look at the ground clamp. Uh, I don't like, I like to always upgrade my welders by putting on the Trico 200 amp ground clamp. The other thing, First is make sure that you have a ground here. This is an OSHA violation if it's broken, it cost you a lot of money. The other one is your extension cord. Make sure that the extension cord is a minimum of 12 gauge three wire. A little $6 gauge from Miller, but it's the most handiest thing you ever want to do. So we're going to measure the thickness of this metal and we determined that it is 22 gauge steel. It's measured along the top here. This is 035, 030, 024. So this is 024 wire. The wire that we are using today is ER70 S6. So we're gonna come over here to our chart here. We're using ER70 S6 wire. We're using a mixture of 75% argon and 25% CO2 or carbon dioxide gas. The wire size is 024. The thickness of our metal is 22 gauge, so we come over here. So we're gonna set the thickness down here, which is three, and 50 on the wire speed. We'll make a test weld and adjust accordingly. That's how you set your welder for what you're welding. <laughs> 